finally today, let's finish with Zechariah 14, verses 20 and 21. In that day, holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. And that day there shall be no longer a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. The high priest wore a plate of gold across his head, right about here, that said, Holy to the Lord. And that signified his consecration, his consecration to God. But you know, the high priest actually didn't just represent himself. The high priest represented all the people of God. And so God's plan always for humans was, and we've said it before, God designed humans to be holy. It's it's not a it's not a sober you know narrow thing it's it's a good thing. Many of the things that we love and desire we love and desire wrongly, and those things are going to change as our experience with God changes. As we come closer to Him, He'll help us to have changed desires. You know, sometimes we just grit our teeth and we think we're just gonna gonna squeeze our way into the kingdom. We're just gonna by the sheer force of will. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do all these Christian things. That's not the way. That's not the way. Uh, What we actually need is a supernatural power outside of and from beyond ourselves. But we can ask God and say, hey, God, please, this is what I desire. I long to be with you. I want to be right in your eyes. I want to want the things that you, God, want. I want to love the things that you, God, love. I want to hate the things, God, that you hate. There is a proper hatred, so to speak. When we come to God and when we receive his gospel, he puts into us that seed of hatred for sin. Without God's help, we won't have a hatred for sin. We'll love it. We'll bask in it. It's kind of like the the the, the animal that wants to go out and, and roll in the in the manure in the corral, you know, and uh, live it up. But we'll recognize that's not his plan for us. Our plan is to is to cleave to him and ask him, God, please transform me and make ourselves available, make our heart available, make our mind available to him for transformation. He will transform us the world would conform us but god will transform us so that we are not of this corrupting world jesus gave his life a ransom for the lost he gave uh, he was taking our punishment and giving us his righteousness he wants to save and win hearts and as we draw close to him we will want to save and win hearts something else that's kind of interesting here is the pots and pans the pots and pans they are all holy to the lord See, we're in a time here, Zachariah is showing us a time when there's no more a distinction between the sacred and the secular. You know, we're, we've, we've gone off into a different age here now. Sin is no more, all done. Won't that be a precious and a fascinating day to be there, to be there? I'm looking forward to it, aren't you? And one more thing here, we have the no more Canaanite in the land thing. Well, actually the word underneath there also has the meaning of traitor. And Zechariah would remember, he would remember in the temple how the priests got together this this big scam they were working, right, where you could only buy animals that were pre-approved by the priesthood. And, of course, they charged exorbitant prices, just soaking everybody for all the, all the gold shekels they could bring in. And so you've got that sort of picture, that situation. And having that in mind, Zechariah looks to a time when there's no more traitor in the land. Jesus, you know, was pretty severe on those traitors. He drove them out of the temple. Zechariah is seeing some of that kind of corruption there, and he's saying, hey, there's not going to be No more trading, no more trading in the temple. Everything is on God's side. So I think we'll leave it there. We're gonna wrap the series here. I thank you for joining me uh, through this uh, this messages on Zechariah. We've done the entire book now, Uh, did it outside, and you saw that I made a lot of mess ups in the filming. But I'm working on it, I'm I'm slowly getting there, you know, you get to see me kind of being, being ridiculous and making my mistakes. Uh, But anyway, tomorrow morning, I'm not sure it'll be tomorrow morning, but I'm planning it'll be tomorrow morning. Let me invite you to come and join me for our new series, our next series. And we are going to go, it's time to do another big book, another long and serious series. And so are you ready for it? Do you know what it's going to be? The Exodus. We're going to take the book of Exodus, the whole thing, front to back. We're going to work on that. So strap on your Egyptian sandals and come along. We're going to go through verse by verse, kind of a study devotional like we've done with this one. I I really hope you'll come. Let's keep growing in the Lord Jesus. Mm